I think I'm gonna cry Bye-bye, love Bye-bye, sweet caress Hello, emptiness I feel like I could die Bye-bye, my love, goodbye I've laughed and cried I've had my fill My share of losing And now As tears subside I find it all So amusing To think I did all that and may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me, I did it my way. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason. Bringing something we must learn And we are led To those who help us most to grow If we let them And we help them in return Well, I don't know if I believe that's true But I know I'm who I am today because I knew you Like a comet pulled from orbit As it passes the sun Like a stream that meets a boulder Halfway through the wood Who can say if I've been changed for the better But because I knew Hello and happy anniversary, Chuck and Nancy. This is Howard Cohn, if you do not recognize me because I am getting old. I am wishing you a happy anniversary. I believe this is nearly your 51st, but possibly your 50th. So I'm glad that you've been together for 50 years. Let me give you a little background on how I know Charles. Charles, known also as Chuck, was a fraternity brother of mine, well beloved by everyone in the fraternity house. He did not have an easy upbringing. His dad passed away early on, and Chuck was, in fact, the man of the family for many years. He was very responsible, and he wanted to make sure everybody around him had an easy time in existing. In the fraternity house, I will give you some examples of how his behavior from early on uh, managed to get into his later life in the fraternity house. There are two things that I recall best about him. One, he and I and a fellow named Terry May were roommates in uh, three front lodge, that is a fraternity room on the third floor which had three people in them. We had a study period. A study period lasted for a week at MIT before exams occurred. Then people were in the study rooms or in our rooms to study. Chuck noticed that I was never in the room and Terry spent most of the time either reading James Bond or playing pickup sticks. Chuck finally confronted me and said, why are you studying? At which time I told him, God only allots so many hours per room for studying, and he was using up all the study hours in the room. He then proceeded for the next three nights to study in the dining room so that he could conserve the study time which Terry and I used. Terry, however, continued to do pickup 
sticks and read uh, James Bond. Now, I then lived with Charles, also known as Chuck, for several years when he was going to Harvard Med. It became apparent that, in fact, he was very brilliant but needed some order in his life. He met Nancy and, his, and they became the absolutely ideal couple because Nancy relieved stress from his life because of just her nature and the way she looked at things in life. I will give you two examples of that. When I first visited them in Cleveland, they drove me to their house and into the driveway where there were tennis balls hanging from the ceiling. I thought that was a very, very good idea because when it rained or snowed, you can practice playing tennis by hitting these balls and they would come back because they were strung to the ceiling. Later, I found out that it was a Smith family thing to do because once your windshield hit the tennis ball, you had to stop the car. That was very stress-free. The other time uh, to show how Nancy put order to Chuck's life was when I was visiting them either for a bar mitzvah wedding or a birth about to occur. We were driving for a luncheon to eat lunch and I believe Chuck was driving, Nancy was in the car, I was in the back seat, and Nancy then proceeded to say how, in fact, once the baby was born, and I believe it was Sarah's baby, things would occur. Nancy said that Sarah and the baby would be in one of the rooms on the first floor in the house. The Moyle, the guy who was going to hatch it the poor baby, was uh, going to approach and be in the living room and then Nancy would come out first and then Sarah would follow her with the baby. They'd give it to Nancy and Nancy would hold the baby while the moil mutilated the poor boy. But after a few more minutes in discussing how this would occur, Chuck said to Nancy, how do you know it's going to be a boy? So there it was that we knew that there was order to Chuck's life. Now that I've given you the most familiar things of my memory of Chuck and Nancy together, I want to play This Is Your Life, Chuck and Nancy. The first thing I want to show you is this. I'm not quite, you could see it, but this is their wedding, in, their wedding uh, invitation. It was addressed to me, person known as Private Howard Cohn in Arlington, Virginia, and the date was the 2nd of May, 1970-something. I guess I was in the Army then, and I was invited to their wedding, and that was going to be on Memorial Day at that time in a, uh, a church somewhere in the Boston area because they couldn't find any other place to have it. Now, as their life proceeded, they had a baby. This baby is Sarah, age eight month, 1972. Now, Chuck and Nancy, they were not destitute, but they were impoverished a bit and they could not afford a color camera. So Sarah was initially shown in black and white. Now I will go to the next picture of my friend Sarah. This next picture is Sarah as a little toddler. I believe they're in Florida and they needed to raise money. This is Sarah looking for night crawlers in the grass to sell to the fishermen in Florida, New York. Florida, New York, Florida, Florida. The next thing I have is from, uh, well, I'll show you another picture. This is Sarah with her toy that's uh, it's in 1976. And the person, you could see Sarah, she was always short. That's Rebecca. That's her new toy, also known as her sister. That's August of 1970. Six. The reason I know the date is that Chuck always wrote the back on the back of the photographs the date when the picture was taken. Rebecca was very nice to me, and Rebecca, in fact, 
send me a card with a beautiful picture on it. It says, Dear Howard, the reason that there are holes in the card is the design needed them. I miss you very much. I can't wait to see you. It's a spinning design. And then she have a PS, which you might see, that she describes, that's a clown. So I thank Rebecca for this nice card, which I have saved and loved. This is a confused picture. They were told that they were going to either be confirmed or baptized, not knowing that they were Jewish. So they were in their baptismal uh, uh, dresses, and then they were very upset thereafter because, in fact, there wasn't going to be a baptism. It was a fake Jewish ceremony uh, brought about by Donald Trump. He was even alive in those days. The next picture I wish to show you, this is when April, according to Charles, of 1983, he sent me and Rebecca out to get one loaf of bread. Certainly, you could not stop at one loaf, so we brought in many, many loaves, and we were showing, Rebecca and I were showing all of breads that we got. This is how the family, in fact, played hide and seek. This is why they were never good at hide and seek. This is Thanksgiving of 95, and they're either hiding from the family or they don't want to see the turkey who has been killed and is dressed. Next picture I have is when they were in the Boston area. They are dressed as little women because they were in Amy Alcott's neighborhood and they figured they dress according to the period of time. We will then progress to the time when Chuck and Nancy wanted to go on vacation so they sent the two girls to meet their cousins in Wellesley. That's Eileen's children. And so you see Howard with uh, Eileen's children and Chuck's children. And Howard, they tried to, in fact, lose me by giving me helium-filled balloons, but I was uh, uh, too heavy even at that time. This is the entire family, and that is uh, Sarah, and Richard's baby, it is either a stand-in or it's a baby who doesn't move, but that little thing there, that's a baby. The last picture I have, or the next to last picture I have, is this picture showing, I guess it is, Rebecca and her husband with a little boy, and you will notice the only one who knows how to dress is the boy, because he's the only one with a cool shirt. Everyone else is just lost. And the very last picture is taken by Chuck. He couldn't really focus it, and he was wandering around with the camera. So the people are to the left of this picture. All he got was the water. In any event, I have a happy and anniversary, and may you have 50 more so you can be all shriveled up 50 years from now. Happy anniversary from Howard Cohn if you do not recognize me. Thank you and goodbye.